So my 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 homie here, Joey Carbstrong, he's a vegan activist. He's got a new movie out I wanted to talk about. It's called Pignorant. Uh, it's on whatever, Amazon. But what this dude did was, and he's great. Everybody should check him out and the way he debates veganism with prominent people. Like he went head to head with Pierce Morgan, this, you know, psycho crap that mm. he is. And, uh, <laughs> but in this one, he actually like breaks into a slaughterhouse and he was the first one to get video of the gas chambers that pigs are killed in. And they're ki they're killed with, um, what? CO2 and they, they get in there, they push the pigs in there and then the gate closes behind them and they, they get them in this confined area and they turn <laughs> on the gas and it takes them about 10, 15 minutes to die. And then the, the entire time they're screaming and it's horrifying and, um, People watching on the outside too, you can hear it from, you know, miles away or whatever. Um, so this guy Brutal. gets in there, breaks in there, gets the first footage of pigs being killed in this way and releases it. And it becomes a national issue. You know, people are outraged at uh, how pigs are, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the vegan population of the UK has doubled in the last year, or let's say they tacked on another million. Uh, to so a million people went vegan in the UK this year. So things are going good. The, is that sustained or is that just like these well, people like they, my ex? Oh, I'm a vegan. I only eat tacos on Sundays. Yeah. No, I think <laughs> I think Sada on Sundays. <laughs> ultimately, uh, these these figures aren't exact because people are reporting on what they are how. But and th there are people that do it wrong that that skip away. But the trend itself is increasing. So we're seeing an increase. All around, and uh, 200 million vegans worldwide, um, and 1.5 billion ve vegetarians. And year over year, we get a little bit bigger. And so I think it's it's coming around, and people will find it on their own once you become open minded enough to go and see. Uh, let me okay, let me give it a shot. Let me see what it's all about. Let me make sure that I'm getting all my nutrients, and then, you know try to become a part of the community itself where you're looking for recipes and stuff like this. Once you so, get to that point, you're in. So has there been an in industry response to this documentary? I mean, as all industry responses, like the, the meat industry is constantly lobbying against the IPCC and all these kind of uh, everybody who's going after. But the thing is the carnivore diet is already heavily funded by the meat industry. And so they've got their angle, right? Getting people on these low carb keto carnivore diets, that's their main angle is saying, well, you can eat as much butter as you want, as long as you don't eat vegetables or whatever, or, or grains. <laughs> um, Goddamn asparagus. Yeah. There's some ridiculous claims out there. We can go into that another day, but, but as far as this movie is concerned, there's probably going to be pushback with all of these documentaries that are that are promoting veganism. There is huge pushback. Meat industries hire think tanks to try to debunk them and try to uh, create another movie that says why this movie was a phony or whatever. They do this mm -hmm. constantly. Um, but evidence-based nutritionists and doctors are noticing now that you want to be Mediterranean omnivores or very best is – uh, plant-based, but plant-based is a lot more difficult because then you really have to get in, you get your omegas from flax seeds that you have to sort of either chew or grind. And you do have to supplement when you're vegan. You, you take a multivitamin every week to get B12 because B12 is only found in soil, which was originally how it got into meat. And it's, it's something that happens in the stomach of animals, including humans, if we were to eat soil, we might be able to produce some B12, but it's not an efficient or Eat safe way. Dirt. Come on. Come on. That's why I always leave my beef. Goddamn Jeffrey is your turn to tell people to eat dirt. I once go, I, I was hanging out with one of my friends from the South and I got him a beet salad. And he's like, I like beets. They taste like dirt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. They really do. That's always been my big turn off by him. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but no, I mean, look, the, 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 the movement is growing. The, the, for me, the, the evidence is overwhelming. And I think once you, once you go black, you never go back, baby. Once you go vegan and you really do it right. And you do care about the animals that you're 
killing. I mean, it's, it becomes easy. You know, I have a vegan community that I'm always keeping in touch with, and I'm constantly bombarded with animals being fucking killed, like live in my feed. Horses in New York City who are dying in the heat because they're being mistreated. Um, chickens and ducks who are who can't walk, who are just stuck in this factory farm waiting to be killed. Pigs that can't turn around because they're born in dark cages, you know. Um, I see so much horrible shit on a daily basis that it just constantly reaffirms that what I'm doing is the it is the moral high ground and it is the right thing to do. And then beyond that, I, I subscribe to nutritionists that let me know that I'm also health-wise on a good way. I'm not eating inflammatory foods with saturated fats and sugar and refined carbs. So it's the smartest thing that I never ever did until recently. And I feel stupid for not doing it sooner. That's the truth. Um, but I'll talk about this guy right here. He was a gang member for a long, long time and he went to prison and then he came out super reformed. And now he's dressing in a tuxedo and giving debates at the Oxford university on, on compassion, just a real sort of modern day, animal loving hero in my in my eyes uh especially when you consider pigs we love we love dogs because they're smart and they're good companions pigs are smarter than dogs so we really should be be at least not random and arbitrary when it comes to picking oh well this animal's cool but this one's not it's like that's you could do the same thing with races well as long as it's not a black guy like it's the same thing you're just saying well i'll eat a pig but i won't eat a dog that's ridiculous. You know, in, in in Europe, they eat horses and they mm -hmm. feed horses to dogs. And in America, we're like, that's wrong. It's like, we just made this up. At least have <laughs> decency and consistency. Um, and you know, what's funny is there was, a, there is an activist group out there called Elmwood's Organic Dog Meat. And what they do is they go spoof on people and they say, we have the best, most delicious cuts of dog that you, you'll you enjoy. Uh, it's all <laughs> organic. They're grass-fed. They're killed humanely. And they go around and pass out brochures trying to get people to understand the difference of what they call speciesism when you're trying mm -hmm. to decide between these two. Like, you're being speciesist if you say, well, I'll eat him, but I won't eat him. So they go, what's wrong with eating dog? They're they're stupider than pigs. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, what are your thoughts on the, uh, like, cricket burgers and things like that? Well, look. Uh, Using bugs for protein. Well, I th I'm not, I wouldn't do that because I'm vegan and I don't, I'm not going to eat a living creature. But at the same time, there are tears that I should worry about. And they don't have a nervous system. Now, they do have a reactive system where they'll pull back if they feel like they're in danger. But they don't necessarily have a nervous system where they go, oh, I'm in pain. Um, so what you do to them is slightly different, but at the same time, you know, I don't have to eat them to survive. So why would I? And besides they're fucking bugs. Isn't it's fucking gross. I mean, <laughs> and that same goes for lab grown meat. It's completely inefficient pipe dream that you're going to be able to lab grow enough meat to feed the world. That's just the overhead for creating something like that is insane compared to growing lentils, beans, nuts, uh, legumes, you know, all these kind of pro soy. Uh, if you grow tofu and tempeh, these are the premium uh, protein sources that we're currently feeding to animals instead of just eating ourselves. Um, but I think, yeah, what do I think about it? I'm not into eating bugs. I mean, <laughs> What's wrong with you? Who, who is? I mean, really? <laughs> wouldn't call it vegan oh. and the other thing is they have they have their place in the ecosystem and i wouldn't want to breed anything into existence to eat eat them if they're like they're autonomous little creatures that have eyeballs and seem cool and so my just my initial thoughts to where my brain goes from here is okay so perfect chris jeffrey's world the whole world goes vegan so then the next next problem that we've got now, okay. water. Where does all our water come from for our crops? And this is not this is just a this is not really connected to veganism straight up. It's just no. in general. 
I love and for this. the future of humanity is you know where the fuck are we going to get water from? Well, to be fair, we've we've pulled so much groundwater out of the earth that the earth has actually shifted axis and it spins at a different axis now. That's true. But here's the thing is we already grow an insane amount of crops for you guessed it, livestock, okay? So when you say where are we going to get all this water from? Check this out. If we stopped doing animal agriculture, stopped growing crops for animals to eat and as well providing them fresh water to drink and then, you know, butchering the meat and then getting the protein that way, we could actually free up like 40% of the world's, uh, let me, I'll, I'll check so I'm not just pulling your leg here, that how much land can we free up if we all went vegan? Well, and then it also just, what where my brain goes from here is, okay, who controls the water? Because you can already predict 50 years from now, that's going to be the number one traded stock on Earth yeah. problem. So, and yeah, and you know, th there's already concerns about people trying to stop you from collecting rainwater. That should be illegal. Like nobody should be banned from collecting rainwater, but they do. They do this in several places in the world. Um, that's a huge concern. As you know, the CEO of Nestle got caught 20 years ago on tape saying that he wanted to own uh, aquifers and stuff like this, things that should be in the public. And this is why we rail against capitalism and privatization is because we don't want other people to own stuff that should be the public commons. Like when the Native Americans uh, had all the Europeans come and the Europeans said, can we have all this? And, <laughs> and, they, and the Indian said, we don't know what you mean by have, but yes, enjoy everything that you uh, – it's because white European settler colonialists, we have this idea that we can own and take everything and make it private and stuff. This is not a good the idea. This is mine. So the land, the, ve the vegan land movement has reportedly saved 25 acres of land from animal farming. It suggested that if 5,000 people join the movement, it could uh, approximately equate to 250 acres of land being saved every month. So as far as water goes, let me check on that. If the world went vegan, how much water could we save? I mean, and here's the thing is cows, especially beef, these are very, very thirsty animals. They, they drink a lot of water, but then also 99% of the beef in the United States is factory farmed, which means that they're eating grain, which is also a water intensive crop. Now, soybean and tofu are water intensive, but nowhere near any of the animal uh, uh, agricultural uh, outputs there. So switching 30% of meat for plant-based alternatives would save enough water to fill 7.5 million swimming pools per year. I, well, they always have to tell me in like swimming pools or football fields. <laughs> Additionally, I'm going to build 7 million swimming pools in my backyard. <laughs> oh, I'll just have to get digging, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Additionally, a vegan diet results in 54% water, less water usage compared to diets which, with more than 100 grams of meat in a day is eaten. So we're talking about saving water and saving an immense amount of land. So 70% of all the soybeans in the United States are grown for livestock, okay? And 7% of all global soy, only 7% is actually eaten by humans. Um, so we're not even eating near as much amount. as we could. So ultimately, and if, how much of that goes to waste as well? Well, there are parts of the plant. This is the argument that carnivores use a lot, and there is some truth to it that the the, the animals eat some parts of the plants that we don't eat. But for the most part, well, I mean, eat, even the parts we do eat, how much of that is going to waste? Also, is what I mean. Well, like thirty. Just, 30% food waste in general. Yeah, 30% yeah. of all food in the United States is wasted. I know that statistic for sure. And that is such a massive amount. Yeah. 30%. Uh, that right there already trumps this stupid idea about personal freedoms. Like it's my personal freedom to waste all this food when there, there's an ecological sort of – consequence to this. And this is what libertarians don't understand or conservatives don't understand is that we're not all rugged individualists. We can't just survive on our own. Uh, we are an organism together. We got this far in our evolution because we worked together and we understood that we uh, 
Absolutely. Don't want to poison the comments and, and things like that. So, uh, well, and that and that's an, that's an argument that I have with libertarians a lot. Is like, well, I and the, the argument is they would just assume that people wouldn't want to poison their water supply because it, you know, that's for them too. But people still do that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, they just that- don't care. Yeah, the libertarian idea is that people would never do anything wrong because people are inherently good. Like, yeah, what? Which is so, which is 